So hello and welcome to a special edition of Better Business, Better Life. This is actually the first part in a two-part series where myself, Nick and Jenny Cliff will get together and actually answer questions about EOS. Nick and Jenny are going to be joining us as podcast hosts on this series and so this will be a chance to get to know us a little bit more in detail and have your questions answered about EOS. Welcome to another episode of Better Business, Better Life. Today I am joined by my soon-to-be co-hosts, Jenny Cliff and Nikki Cliff. Welcome. Welcome, guys. Hello. How are you, Deborah? Hi. Well, good thanks. You, yeah, good to see you too. Hey, look, we thought it'd be really cool if you could actually introduce yourselves. I know you've been on the podcast as guests, uh, but given you're going to be coming on and doing some of the podcast yourself as co-hosts, tell us a little bit about your yourself. We'll start with Jenny because you're the first on my screen. Okay. Uh, so Jenny Clift, a uh, fellow EOS implementer based uh, near Melbourne in Australia and been an EOS implementer for almost four years and actually ran EOS in our business prior to that. So uh, Nick and I have worked together in our businesses for 26, probably coming up 27 years now uh, in IT services and a couple of other sort of business consulting and coaching um, areas, but really the, the uh, longest business and industry that we were in was IT services. Uh, did a merger, um, a number of acquisitions along the way, uh, a merger to get us up to 35 staff and then uh, exited that business last year. Um, and probably one of the, the biggest, um, I guess, highlights of that was doing a, a fairly major uh, merger with another business uh, right in the middle of the pandemic. And, um, you know, sort of taking, you know, 15 staff and 13 staff, bringing everybody together when everybody was working from home um, over quite a spread geographic area and um, and a couple of different countries. Um, but I guess the, um, and, and we can touch on this as we go through the, um, the the journey of EOS and how that helped us take us through that process and come out the other end intact, I think was um, a real um, credit to to us as leaders, but also to EOS. And, um, you know, that sort of, um, I guess, pushed me along on my journey to become an EOS implementer. Cool. Now, for those of you who are actually watching this rather than just listening, you will see that Jenny and Nick are actually in different rooms, but they do actually, they are married. They do work <laughs> together. They do live together. They're just in the two separate houses at the moment. So... <laughs> Nick, tell us your side of the story. Sure. Um, I suppose, uh, just adding on to what Jenny said, I started working in IT over 40 years ago and worked for, in the corporate world and got really disillusioned with a couple of things that happened in there. So we kind of started our first business back in 1996 and yeah, Jenny and I had a 12-month-old son at the time and um, moved from Sydney to Melbourne to Tasmania in six months. Then back to regional Victoria. So we moved four houses in, in 12 months, mm -hmm. which is ironic because we've moved every time, every year for the last seven years as well. But, but in the middle of that, we were really stable in, in a, a regional country town called Echuca in Victoria. We were there for 20 years and we built our business up and we acquired another one and then we moved to Melbourne about oh geez, probably seven or eight years ago. Um, and I went through that journey, uh, tried lots of different things with business, um, peer groups and mentor groups and coaching and just try to hold a lot of different things. And eventually at a couple of conferences in the U S we, we heard about this traction thing and uh, that kind of was what piqued our interest in the O S and on the way back on the flight back, we read the book and said, right, we're going to do this. So we got online, found an implementer and yeah, been working with the O S in our own businesses, but also uh, just 12 months ago, I did my training to be an implementer as well. And uh, now I primarily work with, MSP IT service providers around Australia and really loving it. Good change. Um, but there's a lot of things that happen in between all, all that from there. <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure. For sure. And that's a really good, nice summary there. That's great. So um, Jenny, Nick and I actually worked together doing some EOS mastermind classes, but also we um, are working with EO together as well. So we've we've got a fairly good rapport between us. We thought we'd use these, these sessions to actually answer some of those questions that we often get asked by our clients and also share some experiences that we've had with clients in the session room without giving away, obviously, client names or anything like that, but giving you just some some tips and pointers about you know how EOS can actually help in your business. 
So um, I'm going to pose the first question. We're going to take it in turns. But the first question is I often get asked, you know, because if you search on EOS here in New Zealand, it comes up with shoes, number one, <laughs> lipsticks, number two, and cameras, number three. And only if you're really lucky will you actually find anything to do with EOS, the opera. Oh, and of course, a blockchain has now come into it as well. So oh. you've actually got all of those before you ever get to the entrepreneurial operating system. So um, just keen to hear, you know, if somebody says to you, you know, what is EOS? How do you answer that? I might get give that Nick go first this time. Yep, sure. It is a common question. And for those that don't know it, they say, well, what is this thing? I've heard of it. And I basically lead off with saying, well, it's a, it's a business management methodology to build a really strong leadership team. And especially to help the owners or the, the founders of that business get what they want out of it. Um, mm -hmm. That's kind of where I start from. And so we don't get involved in day-to-day -day operational stuff or how to build your widget or even how to sell your widget. It's really about building a really strong leadership team. And once once people understand that, they go, oh, okay, that makes sense. So yeah, I, I get it. Because there seems to be a little bit of confusion out there as to it's, it's the same as a couple of other products that are out there, like a marketing strategy or a sales tool. It's not that at all. It's all about the people side of it. And that's what really was the key thing that was missing for us back in 2016 or something when we first implemented in our own business. Perfect. Jenny? Yeah, for me, I probably, I, I talk a lot about our experiences and, and how we came to uh, come across EOS and then why we made the decision of EOS. And we tried a few other things as well, and they just were not the right fit for us for various reasons through complexity or the size of the business that we were at the time, what we were looking for. But often I'll talk about Nick and I being stuck in our business and we were looking for something to, I always had this vision of being a um, an employee-led business so that, uh, you know, Nick and I could be in our happy place whether that be you know um you know greek island and we could phone back on a monday to the business and say hey team how's it going and they say you know everything's on fire oh god we're the best book of flight home or you know everything's under control fantastic talk to you next monday that was our vision mm -hmm. and we'd never found anything that allowed us to do that we were too much in the weeds everything that you know, it came back to us um, and we created that. So we were looking for something to, a structure to put into place to allow us to get out of our employees' way. Uh, and the other thing I talk about is, you know, vision, where's the business going, how are you going to get their traction, uh, putting all of the, the structures and, and um, you know, sort of meeting cadences and those sort of things, you know, what do you actually need to do to uh, achieve that vision? And then, of course, the third one, healthy, which is, as Nick touched on, healthy, strong leadership team who are willing to say what needs to be said for the good of the business and uh, always be moving towards that um, that strong, cohesive leadership team and have a bit of fun along the way. Yeah. Absolutely. That's one of the most important things. It's interesting because we actually have quite different backgrounds in many respects. So you were running a business and came across EOS. Um, I was running businesses for other people and coaching at the time that I came across EOS and um, running my own event space. And I really fell in love with the simplicity of the EOS tools. And it kind of brought together for me all the things that I'd been doing naturally in running businesses, but without knowing what I was actually doing. Um, the stuff that you kind of learn in MBA, because most of it is completely useless, but you know, there was some the good stuff is captured in the in the EOS tools and it gives enough structure for entrepreneurs I think to 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 give them some frameworks they can work with in a nice simplistic form without um taking away the stuff that they're really good at which is envisioning you know much bigger things making the world a better place so I kind of fell in love with it without having used it and now I'm using it in my current business and, and just just love it love teaching other people how to use it as well but it is it's that I think for entrepreneurs they're nervous that are oh, you going to put some kind of structure in place and suddenly it's going to be so rigid I can't do what I want to do but in actual fact I find it quite freeing when people actually have a little bit of a framework to guide them on the way through that journey yeah and I think the um the any successful business is using a methodology today. You know, they're not, they're not back in the old days for me, you know, 20 years ago, I, I really did just wing it. It was all about <laughs> closing a deal and getting more money in the bank. And that was, that was my entire strategy. Anytime the bank balance got a bit low, I'd just get on the phone or get out and see clients and get to close some more deals. But there was no, no kind of methodology, no way of building a leadership team, no way of empowering your staff, no way of growing the business. Um, and clients I work with today, I find that, you know, they have they have got some plans and they've got some strategies and, and EOS doesn't make all that redundant. It just helps mm -hmm. really refine it and get that leadership team 100% laser focused because quite often you'll find the owners or the directors or the senior people are on the same page, but 
as you work your way down the organization, there's all these varying versions of what are we actually here for? Um, and yeah, it can be quite challenging. And those first few sessions that we run, I really love it because it really ho- helps people see, well, actually we're not completely hopeless, but my God, there's a lot of opportunity here to get better. And that's what really makes me get, now I get a lot of energy out of that when I come out of the today's session and go, wow, these guys, the eyes are opened up now. And they're ready to get going. Yeah. And you're absolutely right. You said before, you know, we're not here to tell you how to sell. We're not here to tell you how to make your business better. We're actually here just to to enhance it, if you like, and, and make it. Um, I would say make the wheels go faster or just make sure that you don't get lost and, and, and take too many um, um, d- detours along the way. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Hey, I have a couple. I have some people who actually ask the question now. So, is EOS a software system? Because an operating system tends to make you think of um, a phone operating system or a business operating system. Do you ever get that question? Uh, <laughs> no, I, I, look, as in the IT industry, which is where I've spent my time, and a lot of my clients are, they're pretty up to speed with that, and they know all the operating systems, so they don't go down that path. So, I haven't mm. been through that a lot myself. But I can imagine if you're in a completely you know, a retail lolly shop business, you could, you could kind of think, oh, an operating system, I wonder what that is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I guess I preempt that. I often say to people, this this is a structure to run your business. It is not software, although there mm-hmm. is software available to help you run it, but it's more about bringing tools and, and, and that structure and meeting cadence and um, a methodology into running the business in a consistent way that is transferable on to other people. So it's you know, not always things coming back to you. Um, but an, an awful, an, when I do preempt that question, I'll often get, oh, okay, because I was going to ask about that. Uh, because yes. people now tend to think that something like this will be software based. And then you get, they sort of start thinking in that, oh my God, it's another system, another tool that we have to learn, that we have to try and get people to engage in. And we already have so many. Why would we want to take on another one? Makes perfect sense. And you're absolutely right. There is some software that can help you with running those meetings and keeping track of the data and doing all that sort of thing. But it's, it's certainly, it's the framework that is the important part. Yeah. What's your favourite EOS tool? What's the favourite tool from your client's perspective, I suppose? What do you sort of see that has the biggest impact? Um, for me, two things, certainly that level 10 meeting and um you know, and often I'll help clients along sort of the initial part of the journey in just helping sort of bring the structure in and understand what the ter- the, the terminology means and, um, you know, get them tight so that people are not getting, you know, lost into detail or, um, you know, spending too much time on one thing when they don't need to. Mm-hmm. And the other one would be the scorecard the consistency right. of looking at those, de- determining what the important numbers are and then that consistency of looking at those numbers every week. And to me, um, you know, having run our own business on it, a, a bigger red flag to me than a red number was a blank space. If somebody <laughs> was not filling it in, um, had you chosen a number or a measurable that um, you can't measure? And we did that. Um, you know, it's something that in theory, it sounded really good, but we actually couldn't measure that number, so uh, we re- we replaced that. But if a number is continually left blank because somebody on a team somewhere in the business doesn't want to report on that, to me that's a big red flag. And as Nick uh, said earlier, you know, an opportunity uh, for an improvement on a right person in a right seat, or mm. uh, you know, um, something that's going on in a team, or uh, you know, it could be around manufacturing, whatever it may be that you do. Absolutely. Yeah, if, for, for me. I- the, yeah, the meeting, the level ten meetings and scorecards are, are pretty quick wins on operationally. But the bigger impact, I believe, is is the people analyzer and the right people, right seat, uh, mm. getting ensuring that the team members you've got are absolutely doing what they're passionate about and they understand why they're doing it. That whole GWC, do you get it? Do you want it? Do you have the capacity? That to me is probably the number one. And and overall, I'd say the VTO, um, that one page you know, or two-page plan that brings the whole thing together. Um, and, and every quarter when we go back and look at that and say, yeah, is this really where we're going in the next 10 years, three years, one year? That, that's, you know, I had the, the comments I get from my clients are that that's the most, the biggest value is having, forcing yourself to spend that time to do that review on where the heck we're going. 
um, mm -hmm. every 90 days is just changes everything. Um, and it's a bit clunky at the start, you know, you're getting everyone, yeah, you know, everyone bites off too many rocks and, oh yeah, let's do all this. We can do 10 <laughs> things each. And I go, no, you're not. Yeah, we can do it. We can do it. Yeah, no. Nah. <laughs> there's, there's a whole, like, I didn't really get it until um, one of our uh, entrepreneurs organization forum meetings, we had a, a brain scientist or a neurologist brain scientist come and talk to us about the, the, the brain chemistry around the logic of making decisions. And he ran through this mm -hmm. whole program with us and he proved to us that the human mind cannot um, analyze more than five things at once. So you can't hold more than five items in your brain that you're analyzing at one time. So, um, so that, and when he did an exercise with us, that absolutely nailed it because out of the eight people in the room, no one got past five. <laughs> um, yeah. And so there's a logic in this three to five things and it keeps coming up in EOS time and time again, three to five, less is more. And I couldn't really... You know, I heard the words, but I didn't really get it. But once I did that exercise, I went, ah, because if you give people eight things to focus on, they can't focus on any of them. And mm. uh, so I really am an advocate of getting things down to that three, you know, five max. But if you can get down to three things to focus on for the quarter, then you've got a 90% more chance of getting it complete if they can. Yeah. No, it's absolutely right. And I've shared this story with you know with you guys before, but you know, I think when I was doing my own VTO, um, I would think, oh well, I could do seven because you know I'm like super smart and super quick. And so and it took me close to two years to actually realize I kept setting myself six or seven goals and kept achieving three. And so it's like, actually, why don't I set three and then I'll nail it a hundred percent? So yeah, well, I, I think so we have to I think it was our third year of running EOS and our IT business and I was the visionary and everyone made a decision. I got zero goals. For the yeah. quarter. And then you achieved 100% of those, yes. of the zero. Yeah, one, <laughs> one, one or zero for a visionary is probably not a bad thing. Well, I think we actually we actually said that visionaries probably shouldn't have rocks unless they're holding another seat. So if they're sitting in another seat, they might have to have some rocks. But generally, we're not so great at actually kind of getting things done. I tell you what, one of the things that I fell in love with EOS, and I think you both touched on this, was the fact that um, in that first session when we work with clients, we don't do the big, you know, the two page plan, the vision, the values, all that wonderful stuff, which is really important. But we actually go, if we did all of that, and we could leave this room with all of these questions answered about who we are, how we operate, who we deal with what our big area audacious goal is but we go back into the environment and absolutely nothing has changed and so all the rah-rah from the day just completely disappears because we're back to fighting fires and back to the same old thing and I love the fact when I saw the EOS proven process that the first day is all based around first of all structure what structure do we actually need to have this business run the right way and where is the accountability for each of those areas within there and then we get into teaching the tools like the level 10 meeting like the scorecard like the rocks which means when you leave that first day you haven't got the big plan that you thought you were going to walk out with but you actually go back into the business with some stuff you can actually use and that you can actually start to get some results with and to me that was like mind-blowing and now I see it time and time again with my clients is that actually they're expecting to come in and do a big rah-rah session about the vision the values where they are and they leave with all these things and they, I think sometimes they might feel a little bit disappointed because it wasn't what they're expecting but when they come back 30 days later they're just so excited by the progress they've made in 30 days and how much has changed no, de yeah definitely yeah. and that that accountability chart and the structuring the business to what the business needs for the next 12 to 18 months is a real powerful mm -hmm. powerful tool and uh, i find that a lot of people have team members that are there because of seniority because they've been around for a while or they they're in senior leadership roles just because of the time frame nothing to do with their mm -hmm. ability or their passion and that can be a tough conversation, but boy, it makes all the difference when people are, we have the right people in the right seats. So, and we, and in, our, in our business, we had people join and, and leave the leadership team yeah, over periods of time, but because the company needed to focus for six months, we absolutely had to focus on this project. We needed someone to step mm -hmm. off the leadership team and go and focus on that technology issue over there and solve it hundred percent. Then when they finish that, then they came back onto the leadership team in their, in their normal role. So it's, um, it's not a, Thing I love yeah. about the whole process is we review everything every 90 days and it's not set in concrete forever. Uh, mm -hmm. And that was one of my early challenges as a business owner was I would engage with a coach or read a book or go to a seminar and I'd do this massive plan and go, yep, that's it. And I'd tell everyone that's the plan, get them all, sell, sell it to the yep. team, get them on the page. Uh, but I would never update it. You know, And two years down the track, we're still doing things that are not even relevant to our customers anymore. 
so that was a big aha moment for me sure yeah and I think Nick you said about you know people coming uh being on the leadership team stepping off the leadership team and coming back and I think having a the culture where people can do that and because it hurts you know Mm. when you you know the the leadership team has been you know reviewed and you're not on it it hurts it's a big hit to the ego um and having a that healthy cohesive team where you can have those adult conversations and say we understand how you feel you know this is not ideal um it Mm -hmm. certainly wasn't our intention this is what the business needs right now. And we've had people that, you know, had been through that, came back on the leadership team. And then in future meetings, having a conversation with somebody else who was in the same situation and one particular person comes to mind who actually had a conversation with the person who was about to step off the leadership team and said, this happened to me. At the time, it absolutely sucked. But in hindsight, it's the best thing that happened. Um, you know, it was the right thing for me at the time. I wasn't quite ready to be on the leadership team, but it's what the business need and I was able to make a real impact in that space and then come back onto the leadership team when the time was right. And, you know, it's unique to be able to do that because normally uh, people will get very hurt and upset and they'll just leave the business. And, you know, having, um, you know, that always in, you know, what's best for the business and having those open and honest conversations with people, um, there's so much power in that for a business. Yeah, I completely agree. And I think that's the difference in the accountability chart and an organisational chart. Organisational charts tend to get kind of stuck in written stone almost, yeah. hammered into little stone bricks and that, that's what it's always going to be. And actually as a business changes and we work with fast growing or companies that want to get growth, they've actually got to do things differently and focus on different things at different times. So it's important that you can actually do that. And it isn't it isn't about a title. I mean, that's what I love about that. that I always say the leadership team, the term we use as leadership team, is about the team that is working together to look to the future of the company and ensure the company meets its future goals. It doesn't mean that you can't be head of a department and be looking after an area that you absolutely adore and love, but you don't have to be on the leadership team if that's not the focus for the leadership team at that point. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that, mm. that you know, leadership, LMA, the leadership management and accountability piece that we, we, we teach and we talk about, um, it's really important to distinguish the difference between leadership and management. Uh, and mm. I got very confused about that in the early days as well. So it's um, that, that's a, another, yeah, one of, one of our toolbox items <laughs> that we use to yes. help people. <laughs> yeah. I have another question I'm going to ask. You guys have thrown some questions at it too, but I was actually, um, I was having a conversation with somebody the other day and they'd looked at the EOS model and the six key components. And obviously we've got the the vision, we've got the people, the data, the issues, the um, process, and then the traction part of it. And they said, oh, it doesn't have cash on there. It doesn't have strategy on there. So are you really a holistic kind of model? I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on that. Hmm. So to me, the cash component is is definitely embedded in the scorecard and you decide what you need to measure on a weekly, monthly, quarterly, annual basis. And there are compartments in the model for all those different measurements. Um, Mm -hmm. So if there's specific cash, typically there's two or three numbers on the scorecard, the leadership scorecard that deal with cash, you know, cash at bank, receivables, you know, debtors, et cetera. and then there's a month, normally a monthly cycle as well. So not everything is should be measured on a weekly or can be measured on a weekly basis. And then you've mm-hmm. got your quarterly and annual. So that, that's kind of how I've seen that dealt with. Um, the strategy side of it, um, I mean, the VTO is a, uh, a document that captures strategy. Uh, I always say we're not here. We're not doing a five-day strategy plan and, and designing your business, your market and all that kind of stuff. We're refining the way you look at the industry and how you want the the market to see your business it's not necessarily building building that strategy up so i can't really touch on it but i yeah i'm not sure if that answers the question but that's what i've come up with yeah Yeah, sure let's hear from jenny yeah and i i'd respond something similar that the the vto is effectively your strategy because you know you're saying that you know in uh your long-term strategy your 10-year um then your three-year then one and then your one year and then your quarterly so you are sort of breaking down you know to to 
if you want your business to be like this in 10 years, what mm-hmm. does it need to look like in three years, one year? And then what do you need to do this quarter that is working towards that? So to me, BTO is is effectively your strategy. Um, and absolutely, uh, with what Nick said about the the, um, the finance side of the business as well, because um, you know you have your leadership uh, weekly meeting and you do have some numbers on there from a, a um, that the finance side of the business. I agree. I mean, your school kind is absolutely the, the point where all the leadership team are actually looking at the numbers. So in actual fact, we have more of a focus on on cash and cash flow than, than any other um, sort of methodology, if you like. But also we do have things like if we recognise there is an issue with cash flow, we have tools like the cash flow drivers and things to actually help people deal with that. So the thing I love about EOS is there is the what we call the foundational tools, which gives them the basics and the foundations for, for building the, the business um, structure and framework. But then there's all these other tools you can pull and you're doing a merger acquisition here's a merger acquisition tool got some cash flow challenges here's the cash flow drivers um and so there's you know it, it's not just we just do the basics and that's it there is a whole raft of tools in that toolbox which i absolutely love mm-hmm. and strategy wise again like you're doing it with a whole team so i mean we, you know you've got usually four to eight smart people sitting in a room and um, by bringing everybody into those meetings and having those discussions together i think you get a far more diverse um thought process you get a much more rigid or not much rigid, much more um sort of like word a much more robust kind of decision making process and so therefore what comes out of it as your strategy in your vto is actually i think um the best that possibly can be and- oh, absolutely and i think back to when we first started uh working with our implementer back in 2017 or 16 and we all sat quietly and wrote down what we thought you know the business would look like in 10 years time and then went around the room and I think from memory there were five of us on the leadership team and we all said the same thing but we said it in different language and it was really uh it was interesting but it was also quite um um I guess validating that five of us that have worked together for quite some time in the business and Nick and I as owners we were all working towards the same goal um Mm -hmm. But we'd never articulated that before and, and the power of having that down. And, and then I used that as sort of, I guess, part of the strategy was um, really around our sort of recruitment. Nick carried that VTO round or we carried it round, you know, laminated in our laptop bag. So when somebody says, oh, you know, so what's your business, you know, what are you trying to achieve? Well, here you go. Here it is. Here's our strategy. And people were like, holy cow, wow, this, this is really cool. You know uh, what you're trying to achieve. You know why you're here. You know what's important to you. Mm-hmm. Um, so again, that VTO, that the actual physical document be- became part of the strategy because it was, you know, we, um, I guess, taken a little bit more seriously in that we um, we knew exactly um, where we were going and how we were going to get there. And we would also use that VTO document for recruiting as well. If you're trying to recruit for a senior position in your business and you can show, demonstrate that you've got a plan and where you're going and what the what the action plan is and, you know, the growth plans, people go, oh, okay, this, this looks like a really cool place to work. So it actually worked really well mm-hmm. for us. That's the end of part one of this series that we're doing. Um, it has been cut. We actually recorded the whole thing as a, a, a one piece podcast and we broke it down to two parts just to make it easy to digest. We'll be doing the next part next week. Um, so please do tune back in again next week to get the second part of what is EOS and common questions about EOS with Deborah, Nick and Jenny. Thank you.